Hi. Uh oh. I don't know whether I can talk and play Ninja Cat at the same time, but we will see. This is the first class of Bootstrap Algebra, which is a curriculum that's going to reinforce some of the stuff you've learned about algebra, um, maybe introduce a few new algebra topics, all in the context of you getting to create your own game. Um, this is an example game that's created with all of these concepts. You'll learn everything that's needed uh, in this class to create a game like this and a lot of other ones, um, just like uh, Ninja Cat here. I'm going to try to get that ruby, stay away from the dog's teeth, and I'll go ahead and die. All right, that is going to be super fun. Um, so the, since this is the first class, we'll have to do a little bit of setup. Um, one of the first things is, let's go to wescheme.org. See how that's spelled? And if you don't have um, my programs, you may have a login or a, a button. Um, this uses a Google account, so you do need uh, a Google account. Gmail account to be able to set this up. And once you do, you can log into wescheme.org. And we're going to use wescheme in um, every lesson. Ninja Cat itself, if you go into my programs, one of the starter files, the very first one is Ninja Cat. So once you load that, it may you. Um, I did not, uh, you know, it, it said to do, it, uh, it gave a button for full screen. I was not able to get full screen working on my browser um, and, and be able to do the controls. So um, that may or may not work for you, but it works fine with not in full screen. Use the um, space button to start a game. Use the left, right, up and down arrow keys to play the game. I'm going to go ahead and close these. What else? Uh, every lesson, we're going to start at bootstrapworld.org. We're using a curriculum that's been used for uh, many, many years to teach programming, to teach about algebra, and actually several other subjects. So uh, on the under courses, we'll go to algebra. Click here for latest version. We're, we're doing this in fall of 2020, so that's going to be the latest version. We can see that here in our URL. And we're going to go through the lessons in order. Um, so we're going to start with the numbers inside video games. Um, I have the lesson slides up here, so I'm going to start those. And the purpose of this um, this class we're taking for the next few weeks um, isn't to make you into a computer programmer. Um, maybe that's something you might like to do for a job, maybe not. Um, but it's to um, get you thinking in a different way. A lot of kids uh, have uh, trouble with uh, all of the numbers that are used to teach math um, in the United States up through, you know, ninth, tenth grade, and never get to a lot of the other fun parts of math. So you may be under the impression that math is all about numbers. And it's really not. It's about a lot more. We start with numbers because that is something that, that most people can understand. We understand how to count, so we can understand how numbers can, can represent counting. And we use those as examples of more and more higher concepts in math. But for people who get bogged down in um, just the, um, the mechanics of doing arithmetic, uh, figuring out how to do long division, and you have bad experiences with some of those things, then you start thinking you hate math. And really, you don't know much math. You might just hate long division. Um, and that's not math. So that's really another big goal of mine with this, um, this set of lessons is to um, get you to realize that math is more than just arithmetic. You can actually be bad at arithmetic and great at math. Um, a lot of famous mathematicians are famously not great at arithmetic. 
And you know what? We live in such a wonderful time where we can write computer programs to do all of the arithmetic for us. So when I've taught this class before, the kids that I've taught it to, I tell them that once they get out of school, they can quit doing arithmetic. If they want to write a computer program to do whatever arithmetic they have to do at their job, that will be fine. They won't ever have to do any long division um, as part of their job uh, by hand. So let's. We're, so we're going to try to get over the idea or get past the idea that math is all about arithmetic. Uh, all about arithmetic. And we'll go the other way and see that there really are numbers and calculations happening in all parts of our lives, including inside video games. So as you go through and you do all the creative parts of making a video game, um, you'll see um, a lot of the interesting numbers and calculations that are part of a video game. So we already looked at Ninja Cat. So remember, in Wii Scheme, if you want to play Ninja Cat yourself, once you're logged into Wii Scheme under My Programs, it's going to be first here. So this is just telling you how to play Ninja Cat. Instead of another link to materials for this class, we'll go to this page that we started with. Which, if you remember, if you, if you haven't gotten there yet, go ahead and get your computer there as you're going through this. And again, we'll go back to Bootstrap World, Courses, Algebra, latest version, so that we have Fall of 2020. And we're in the first one, the Numbers Inside Video Games. You can tell this page is meant for teachers, but one of the things I want to talk with you about this semester is there's no reason that you should not understand how you're being taught. So um, if there's teacher's resources, look at them. That doesn't mean to cheat if you're not expected to look at an answer. Don't do that. But to look and see what materials the teachers are using um, helps you to be able to teach yourself. So I taught myself most of the, uh, all of the programming languages that I've been using in the past 25 years as a software engineer, a software architect, a data architect. Um, and you'll end up teaching yourself a lot more than anybody else ever teaches you. So we're going to use these great materials that are here for teachers. Uh, lesson goals, but we're going to spend a lot of time on the materials. I'm showing you the slides. You're going to, you've already opened up the Ninja Cat demo. So the slides ask us to open up Notice and Wonder. So here is the Notice and Wonder page. Um, Bootstrap World comes with uh, a, a very nice uh, workbook. I'm going to go back to this other tab. So here in the main tab, just real quickly. I'll go back to this main page for fall 2020. Down at the bottom, there's a student workbook. I'm going to click on that briefly. So this is a PDF file, 64 pages. If you want to print that out, that is completely fine. Um, and, and work on it in pencil. Um, that used to be the only way. The last time I taught this class, that was the way we did it. Um, but now, inside the uh, materials, they're providing links to just single pages. So, so either way is completely fine. I'm going to go back to the materials for this first lesson. And we're on the Notice and Wonder page. Um, sometimes the only only thing about um, the PDF, I'm not sure that there may be differences in the page numbers, but you'll you'll they'll, they'll always give you the title of the page, and you can see uh, even if you're using the PDF version, there's going to be a Notice and Wonder page. So let's see what they want us to do. Write down everything you notice about this game. So we're going to use this pattern a lot of Notice and Wonder. So as you play through Ninja Cat, what do you notice? So what are some things that you observe about what's going on with the game? And then what do you wonder? What, um, what do you think could happen? What might be some things that you might wish the game did a little differently? I know once you start playing the game, you'll think, oh, I wish 
that this thing behaved differently. I wish there were bombs. I wish something else. So what do you wonder about how that's put together? So this is going to be our first time where we're going to do something that you're going to do. So right now, as soon as I finish, um, I'll, I'll tell you tell you when to pause. Um, but what we're going to do is pause the game. You play Ninja Cat for about five minutes or until you get killed three or four times, however you long you, you want to play. But um, uh, timing wise, you know, five minutes or so. And um, then go ahead and write down and talk to your partner about um, what you notice about Ninja Cat and what you wonder. So go ahead and pause the video now. Great. Hopefully you have some things filled in um, that you notice and wonder, and we will use those ideas as we go forward. Since you just did that with your partner and we can't talk to each other, um, you and your partner hopefully already talked about what you noticed and what you wondered. If you haven't yet, feel free to pause right now and go ahead and have a dialogue with your partner about what you noticed and what you wonder. All right, now we're going to continue reverse engineering this game. And I didn't talk about that terminology, but that's terminology we use in computer science a lot, and especially with gaming, where we take an existing thing like the Ninja Cat game, and then we try to figure out how it works. So um, we... So that's the process that we're going through now, is we observe some things about how it works um, and uh, then continue to break that down and reverse engineer so that we can make our own version. So let's open our page three in our workbook. So I'm going to go back to my materials. Page three. All right. First, list each thing you saw in the game. Second, list... Uh, each thing that you, you saw, that you wrote down, um, write what changes about it. And third, what specifically is changing? So in the page, we have a little uh, page to remind us, a little image to remind us of what's going on in Ninja Cat, some of the elements we see here. And then a grid we can fill in. And they've already filled in one. So they're talking about the dog, which is the enemy or the danger for this game. What changes about it? His position, and more specifically, the x-coordinate. So if you remember from algebra or pre-algebra, we have a coordinate system. Um, it was uh, proposed by a guy named Descartes, a French person, French mathematician named Descartes. So we call it the Cartesian coordinate system. Just um, that's the historical name for it. And in the uh, the middle, normally in the middle of uh, Cartesian coordinate is the coordinate zero zero. However, in games, because we are on a screen, we actually think of the bottom left corner. So down here the bottom left corner as zero zero so we don't actually do any work in quadrant two quadrant three quadrant four of the Cartesian coordinate system we are doing everything in quadrant one so we have positive numbers positive numbers so now we can talk about what changes so we want to use noun words not verbs so if we want to say if you notice something like the dog moved so we want to start in this in this reverse engineering sheet to rephrase that, not that the dog moved, but that the position of the dog, right, changed. So the thing in the game is the dog. What changed? Its position. Did it move up and you know all over, or did it just move left and right? Well, the dog only moves left and right, and on the coordinate system, what that means is what changed is his x coordinate. And we'll do a lot more about coordinates in the next lesson. But just think about it that way, and don't get too bogged down in it um, for this reverse engineering exercise. But try, um, as you write down the thing in the game and what changed, is um, to use noun words like its position changed, not that it moved. 
but it's most more important to um, try to get as many things as you can of the things in the game and then talk to your partner about um, how to phrase what changed and like I said we're going to talk much more about those algebra things like coordinates but um, I wanted to explain that since they use that here as what changed is the x coordinate which is along this number line right here which looks like it starts at 0 0 on the far left of the screen and it goes over to 640 0 0 sorry 640 0 on the far right of the screen this box represents the entire game screen that we see. I'm just going to go ahead and start Ninja Cat again myself. So, this image represents this box. So, we'll call this the virtual screen or the game space with a zero, zero down here. What did that say? 640 zero over here and we can see that the dog he just moves left and right so the thing that is changing about him is his position and it's only changing along the bottom which is the x-axis um, don't forget to, to put in some things that don't change so if you can say nothing there may be some some elements in this game um, as you, you that you noticed that don't change. So that will be the thing to do after this lesson is over. Um, I've tried to mark those with you do. Um, I don't really want to call them homework. We're all home a lot now, um, but it's the thing that you're going to do before our next lesson is to fill out that reverse engineering sheet on page three. So some things to look at are the X and Y coordinates. And think about how many numbers does it take to represent one single frame in a video game? How they're changing? Do they increase or decrease? So as you look back over here, think about increasing, because this goes to 640. As it goes up, the Y coordinate goes to 480. So think about what's changing. Would we need yet? Yeah, what would we need to change if the dog could also move up and down? We talked about that. How many numbers would we need to have in a two-player game? So think about those things. And what if the game was in 3D? Would that change how many numbers we need to represent each um, thing that we notice in the game? So that's again something to talk with your partner about as you're filling out your sheet. All right, now, this is the, f the, the next thing. After you get finished with that sheet, on a, another piece of paper, um, this is something to do before we meet again next time. Think about your favorite video game. So pick a game, actually talk to your partner about it because we want to be specific. And then think about how long that took to create that game. How many people you think worked on it? How much money did it cost to make that game? And go ahead and write those things down because then I want you to spend some time, it won't take long, a few minutes, spend 30 minutes or an hour on the internet researching how long did it actually to take to create that game? Is that game still active? Are there still people working on it? And how many people does it take to create a game like that and how much money? And then look and see how accurate your estimates were. Until you go through an exercise like this, you don't get better at estimating. But the more that you write down those estimates so that you can be committed to them and then you research um, some actual values, you get better and better at making those estimates. So for next time, do that exercise also where you write down your estimates for those questions and you um, research the uh, additional answers to those questions um, so you can get better at estimating. And then now connect that back to NinjaCat and think about all of the different elements in the game that you chose that change uh, versus how many elements are in NinjaCat. 
So think about what that tells us about making modern games. Um, and, 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 and to uh, just what we call setting expectations as we talk about making our Ninja Cat game um, with one person, you, uh, as the creator, and we're going to spend a limited amount of time. Uh, it's not real. It may not be a realistic to expect that it's going to be as um, uh, have as many elements or be able to do as many things as the game that you chose as your favorite game. Um, so we'll just recognize that and, and realize that that maybe we're starting at a, an easier place, a different place, a more simplified place so that we can learn something. Um, and then um, that may be uh, uh, quite different from the game that you chose. If you need to look at these questions again, uh, well, I'll, I'll show that in the in, in the, in the uh, wrap up, which is good. This is the last slide, and now we're back on our main page for this uh, teacher's page for uh, the numbers inside video games. I'm going to use that as the review for this, and then also to point out where you can find those questions. So. The goals for this were that you'd be able to identify objects that are changing in a video game, to use math language, we talked about those coordinate systems, and to understand, to really gain a better understanding of the time, money, and resources that it takes to create a game, and you'll do that when you get your research. So the slides that I used uh, are, are from the resources here, and they follow along with uh, this story layout that we have here. So these things were all co connected, um, uh, covered in the slides. Yeah, and here, so here's some of those questions. How long did it take to create the game? How many people? How much money? Those things that we want to write down and estimate. Um, if there's a question that, that I went over in the video, you can go back in the video and look, or um, you can, can click the slides and it will open in um, Google Presentation. So if you've used Chromebooks at school, and just because you had to, to sign into to Wii Scheme, um, you should be able to open those slides. Um, but otherwise, you can go back and look at the video. I always want to look forward to what we're doing next week, so I'm going to go back to the main lesson. So if the coordinate thing was new to you or you don't remember it from algebra, don't worry. We're going to go into um, next lesson into um, the, the meaning of all those coordinates, the terminology, how we represent those, all of those things we'll look at in the next lesson. Thanks.